Hello, hello everyone. It's me, Arden Lee. I'm back today with another video. And in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about some of the nuances of using the law of attraction. And specifically, I want to talk about what to do when using intentional language put in a positive mindset feels like too great of a suspension of disbelief for where our current circumstances are. And what I mean by that is that if you know anything about the law of attraction, which states that uh, we, we receive the thing that we focus on and uh, neurolinguistic programming, otherwise known as NLP also, which teaches uh, similar principles to the law of attraction that says that the language we use, the words we use to describe our reality have an active component in creating our reality. Uh, so if we understand these things, what do we do if, we can't look in the mirror and lie to ourselves with a bunch of affirmations about how great things are if our current circumstances don't reflect that. I'm gonna give you guys some solutions to, uh, to what you can do if you're in that spot but you wanna get out and you wanna bridge that gap between those things. So before I get into that, of course, as always, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, on this channel, I love to talk about how to hack our beliefs, our language, our intentions in order to create better circumstances for us in our lives. So if this talk is something that appeals to you, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Let me know how this talk hit you. Leave me a comment. Tell me uh, if there's anything that you specifically would like to hear addressed. And, uh, and then we will, uh, we will take it from there. All right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you, uh, appreciate you watching. So today I want to talk about that problem of... Um, there's there's a number of uh, uh, of people that I encounter or um, you know who have had questions uh, in this regard in this capacity about look I understand Arden that theoretically I'm supposed to use my language to create the world that I want for myself right I'm supposed to it's like dressing for the job that you want instead of the job that you have already right it's this idea that we want to start describing things in the way that we want to see them and not in alignment with the negativity that we may see in front of us in our present moment that we are looking to change. And some days, you know, there have actually been studies about the, uh, the effectiveness of using affirmations, you know, looking in the mirror and saying things that you want to believe are true, you know, looking in the mirror and saying, I am grateful, I am successful, I am beautiful, I am radiant and abundant and all these great things. And some of what those studies have said is that Affirmations can be incredibly useful and incredibly effective when they're being used by a person who is pretty close to what those beliefs are anyway. But what if you're looking in the mirror and you're like, this is terrible, my life sucks, I'm um, in debt, I don't feel attractive at all right now, I feel stressed, I feel frazzled, like how am I supposed to look in the mirror and say, I am grateful for all the abundance I'm receiving and I am beautiful and I am loved and I am whole and all this other stuff. And apparently when you have someone who is uh, being instructed to use affirmations that, uh, that they have too difficult of a time stretching their minds to be able to believe in reality where they don't feel anywhere close to the affirmations that they're saying then that actually has an adverse effect. It actually has a negative effect because it draws attention to the fact that their lives are so different from the thing that they're trying to say that it actually frustrates and stymies them and it doesn't work. So I want to start addressing uh, how to make things work better. <laughs> um, I was out at a bar the other night um, I was, uh, I, I, there's a bar that I visit sometimes when it's kind of like late at night when I've finished all my, my videos for the day or whatever, and I want to go out and I want to grab a bite to eat where, uh, somewhere that I know is, uh, you know, is still going to be serving food late. And there was a bartender that, um, that, uh, has served me a number of times. And she asked me a little bit this time, like, what's my mate? What's my name? And what do I do? And, uh, so I told her a little bit about my coaching and I told her, I was like, well, yeah, I have this eight week course called the repatterning project and I work with clients one-on-one -on -one individually as well in, you know, in between the course. And, 
And essentially what we do is we, we examine all of those beliefs and patterns that we have acquired throughout our lifetimes, um, throughout either uh, social conditioning or uh, trauma imprints or any kind of programming that we've taken on from our parents, our major caretakers, our teachers, our peers, et cetera, et cetera, you know, formative relationships that we've gotten into throughout the course of our lives. And we examine them when we see what's working for us and, uh, and what's not. And she said to me, she was like, oh yeah, I totally get that. Um, actually, I have a problem like that where, um, where my, you know, uh, my parents, when, uh, when me and my siblings were growing up, they never fought in front of us until they had already decided to divorce. And once they decided to divorce, they weren't trying to hide things from us anymore. So they just fought pretty openly in front of us. So now it comes up in every single relationship I have. Um, I'm so conflict avoidant because I associate that conflict with things ending, with abandonment. And I think that once people start fighting, that that means things are over and I can't help it. That's just the, that's just the way I'm wired. And I was like, you can help it if you want to. I understand that it's not the most intuitive thing to do, but it's not as difficult as it seems. And it's absolutely possible. And she kept speaking, it was like nails on a chalkboard, oh my God, and she kept speaking in these present tense sentences, it was like, I can't do this, I can't help that, and I was just like, oh my God, if I could just, all I would need to do is like, I, if I could just change the language that you're using, that would be so helpful, you know, it might not solve the entire problem, but it would create this huge step forward that would allow you to, to start seeing things a little bit differently. If I could just change what you're saying from, if I could just rephrase it, I would rephrase it to, um, I had this incident when I was growing up where my parents started fighting in front of me and my siblings only after they announced their divorce. So, um, so up until this point in my life, all of my relationships have shown a pattern where I feel conflict avoidant because I am afraid of uh, things ending. Um, but now that I'm having this conversation, I'm recognizing where that is a pattern that has been consistent with me in the past. But what you're telling me is that I'm capable of changing it in the moment right now. And if I keep my mind open to that belief, then maybe I might see where it might be possible for me to have uh, a different relationship to conflict in the future and where, uh, you know, where, where, I could, um, uh, where I could solve that problem for myself. And I could maybe feel uh, that it was safe for me uh, to, to bring up my feelings with a partner in a way that might cause uh, friction and to not be afraid of that because uh, ultimately, you know, um, ultimately that may actually serve the relationship. Is that what you're saying? I would have loved that. Of course, most people, you know, most people don't do that. That's partly why I have a job is because most people don't know how to uh, don't or don't. It's not that they don't know, but they're not thinking about it. They're not consciously thinking about the ways that they are using their language in order to, um, you know, to, to step forward. So so even even in that, you know, um, some of the things that that are so difficult about affirmations when we when we take them down to that really simple and reductive way of using them um you know they're they're like they they stress us out more because as i said like we can't we can't stretch our imaginations to deny the fact that in the present moment we still feel the effects of this negativity or we still feel that we're in pain um, and that may very much be true because our pain, of course, needs to be witnessed and acknowledged. In my experience, our pain needs to be heard. Our pain, even if it's just witnessed by ourselves, you know, even if it's just us admitting to ourselves that we are going through grief or we have had things happen to us that are not fair or what have you, even if it's just that much, you know, we can't just lie to ourselves and look in the mirror and say, everything's great. I'm wonderful. I'm radiant. I'm abundant. You know, if we really don't believe it. So so what I want to encourage you to do is I want to encourage you to start looking at the ways that you're using your language. And if those affirmations that you've heard about before from, you know, all the whole like positive thinking, love and light, fake it till you make it bullshit that frankly is, is rampant in, you know, the new age, spiritual society, culture, whatever. Um, and it doesn't sound like it's something that if that sounds like it's not going to work for you. Well, you're right, and there is a reason, and that's because it's not nuanced and it's not sophisticated enough to deal with the complexities of what you personally are going through, right? 
there's just, there's no doubt <laughs> about that. If you feel resistant to saying something in the moment that doesn't feel true, it's because it doesn't feel true for you and you're not there yet. And that's fine. As you know, Abraham Hicks says, you can't, you can't get there from there, right? <laughs> so what that means is that you can't just you can't just immediately skip ahead and, and fake yourself into, into thinking those things from, um, from that place of negativity that you might feel like you're trapped in at that moment. So what I advise you to do in those situations is there's a lot that goes around about, you know, using affirmations that says, don't phrase things in the negative, you know, don't say like, I don't want this or I don't want that or whatever, because the universe doesn't understand negatives and it's just going to give you the thing that you're asking not to have, right? There's, um, there's a story from when I got my neuro-linguistic programming certification uh, that, that my, my two lovely teachers uh, told me, they said they had a friend who was looking to buy a house and she was like, I want a house, but I don't want it to be in this county and I don't want it to have a swimming pool. I hate having to clean a pool and I don't want it to have this. I don't want it to have that. Well, she ended up moving into a house that had literally everything that she listed that she did not want it to have because as they were teaching, she did not phrase what she wanted in the positive so, um, so therefore, as I said, the universe doesn't understand negatives. So we still attune ourselves to that thing that we're saying that we don't want because that's still the thing that we're focusing on. So there is a solution to this, which means that, which essentially comes down to the idea that in order to receive more abundance, we somehow, we sometimes have to empty the container first, right? If we have a container full of garbage and we want to fill it with, you know, radiance and abundance and all that stuff that people are doing all their affirmations about. But essentially what we're saying is, is we're, we're trying to, we're trying to fill it up when it's still full of all our crap, right? So here's the thing I want to say about that. Essentially what I'm saying is you get to use negative words in alignment with the law, you get to use negative phrasing and still be in alignment with the law of attraction if what you are doing is emptying the container before you fill it again. So I'm going to say that again. You get to use phrasing in the negative if what you are doing is emptying your container before you get to fill it again with something better, right? So if I were this woman who was, who was bartending, for example, you know, I might say, as I said, in the past, my actions have displayed a lot of negative patterning around conflict avoidance and around fear and scarcity mindset when fights and arguments come up uh, in, in my relationships. Uh, but now that I'm seeing that this is a problem, I know that I have it within me. So, so, you, so you see like where I have like that first half that acknowledges what is going on. And then there's that second half that's, but I know now that I'm bringing this into my conscious awareness that I have the capacity within me, or at least I allow for the possibility that I have the capacity within me to heal this pattern and to move on and have to have healthier relationships with conflict in the future, right? Sometimes it's just about that. And you guys might not think that this actually does a lot. You might be like, come on, Arden, what's the difference of just phrasing how I say things, but it's just, it just is the way that it is. And I will, I will tell you from my own experience that being intentional with my language and watching the way that I phrase things and always leaving room for things to get better has absolutely been instrumental in improving my own life and my own circumstances. So that's what I want to teach you today is essentially, you know, there are some things that there are some, some mantras, some affirmations that, you know, for example, that I've taught before, um, you know, there's one that I learned, uh, from a shaman when I used to do ceremony with his circle. Uh, and it starts off with, uh, I do not give permission to vicious spirits, mocking spirits, hungry ghosts, and their like to be a part of my reality. I am a sovereign being and blah, 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 blah. So, and people were like, huh, you started that off with a negative. Like I do not give permission to these things. And they were like, how does that, how does that reconcile with the law of attraction? And I was like, well, actually that's a great question. Thank you for asking it. And, uh, the way that that works is that you're saying, I do not give permission in the beginning to establish a boundary. And then it goes on to, you know, I am a sovereign being and it is up to me who I choose to invite and whom I deflect. I am king of my kingdom, queen of my queendom. The citizens of my kingdom slash queendom are happy, abundant, and free, right? So we start off by saying, I'm drawing a boundary. I do not give permission. And yet this is the thing that I want, right? So it's emptying that container and saying, I don't want this, but you can't stop there. Because if you stop there, essentially, if you're like, I don't want this and you dump all your trash out, 
then you have an empty container. And if you haven't changed your vibration, if you haven't changed the thing that you are attracting from what you were attracting last time, you're just going to attract more garbage. So what you want to do then is after you've emptied that container, then declare your new intention, right? I do not give permission to vicious spirits, mocking spirits, hungry ghosts, and their like to be a part of my reality. Empty the container. Now I have my, my empty container in front of me. What am I going to fill it with? I am a sovereign being and it is up to me whom I choose to invite and whom I deflect. I am queen of my queendom. The citizens of my queendom are peaceful, abundant, and free, right? So now I'm filling up my container with this intention that I am now a sovereign being. I'm a creator. I get to say what comes and what goes. And the people who are in my container, <laughs> the people who I allow into my reality are peaceful, abundant, and free. I'm attracting people who align with, uh, you know, with the vibration that I want to put out in the world. So things like this are very powerful. So anyway, that is how to use affirmations. If you don't, if, if, if right now they seem too cheesy for you, there's a reason for that and it's fine. You don't have to look in the mirror and say, oh my God, I'm so grateful, I'm so successful, I'm so abundant when you're sitting there going like, wow, this is bullshit, what is this doing for me? You just have to drop into your reality and change it a little bit. And so, and also before I, before I end this video, this is very important to me to do. Um, uh, someone who, uh, who also teaches this, uh, even, even though, even though she and I teach some of the same things and may have arrived at these conclusions kind of, you know, on our own paths, um, someone who teaches this in a really cool and, uh, and clear and grounded way, uh, is, uh, an empath by the name of Aura North. And, uh, she wrote a book called, I don't want to be an empath anymore. And she has a section where she talks uh, about how to do this uh, that she calls uh, alchemy affirmations, pain alchemy al affirmations, I, I believe. And she, uh, so I absolutely advise you when her um, when her book is republished again. Right now, it's it's in between having been self published and being re released under uh, under an imprint. I'm super stoked for her because it's a great book, and I'm super stoked for all of you because it's going to be more widely available. So when that does come out. Um, I don't want to be an empath anymore by Aura North. Uh, she's a dear friend of mine, super cool girl. And there is a great chapter in there exactly on how to do what I'm talking about in this video. So I highly recommend that. And, um, and also stick around. Um, if you, uh, if you find my Facebook, uh, ardently, uh, we're going to be announcing very shortly, uh, she and I, and another colleague of ours, Jamie Lee Finch are going to be doing a, uh, um, a workshop for new year's on January 6th about how to, um, exactly what we're talking about now, how to empower yourself into your creative freedom and, uh, and how to move forward. So, so find that, <laughs> find me on Facebook, find us, um, and find that we're going to be announcing that in the next couple days. So, um, uh, so thank you, you guys. Thank you for paying attention. I hope this was helpful and hopefully that clears up a little bit about how to use affirmations. Even when you don't feel on top of the world, um, there's always that possibility for things to change in an instant and just leave yourself that opening. Thank you for listening. Hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.